Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Eventual consistency is the term people most often use when referring to reading from a different data source than where they perform their write. This often leads to a bad user experience where a user performs some type of action and then doesn't immediately see the change in the UI. I'm gonna explain the different ways this happens and how you can deal with it. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So a very common way this happens is with replication lag. We're gonna use a read replica from whatever primary database you're using, and that replication is eventually consistent. So what happens is we have our client that it makes a request to change some state, perform some type of action, some type of command, and we hit our primary database for reading, potentially in writing. So we perform that and we return back to our UI and maybe our UI then immediately goes to try to fetch that data that it changed in some way. So it then makes that call to the read replica, but that read replica has stale data. It doesn't immediately have that change because we essentially had a race condition where we beat the replication. So then we return back to our client, but it has now stale data. And in that kind of in that meantime, we've then replicated that data from our primary to our read replica. So this is the probably the most common scenario because you have the expectation as you're writing code that your reads are going to be consistent with your writes. And because you're using a replica that is eventually consistent, it's not going to be. So you need to address it but that's not the only way this can occur. So with CQRS and event sourcing, this is probably one of the most common questions that I get in some of the comments or just in general about event sourcing and projections. So what happens is we have our client, it's making a request, some type of command to make some state change. Maybe we have a domain model and we're publishing an event and we're persisting that to our event store. So we're event sourcing, we have our event store. Then we return back to the client saying, yes, your command succeeded, wonderful. Then again, it tries to, at some point, your UI immediately then goes to perform a query trying to hit your projection, your query database. But again, it's returning back stale data because your projection hasn't been updated yet. Your event store likely has some subscription where you have an event handler that's updating that projection and saving that to your query database. But again, we had this race condition where we're querying after our state change, but our projection hasn't completed in time. Now, this last example has nothing to do with eventual consistency, but rather async processing and using a message queue. But it still has the same effect, which is a bad user experience when you're trying to read your write. So what happens is you have a client that sends a command, but rather than processing that command immediately, rather what you do is you just throw that onto a queue. And then you ultimately return back to the client. Then from there, the client, again, may immediately, through the UI, perform a query that then reaches the database. But you actually haven't potentially processed yet or completed processing that actual command, that message. So then you end up returning something probably stale back to the client. And then from there, however long after, your command picks up that message after the queue, off the queue, that command handler, then processes it, and then updates your database. But again, you've processed this, processed this asynchronously, so you're trying to query something that hasn't even occurred yet. Now, in most of the situations, this is a bad user experience because it's a single user trying to read their write. Again, you're performing some action, and then because there's some delay in where we're actually gonna go read the results of that, you get back stale data. But again, this is generally in kind of the context of an individual user. When you're in kind of a multi-user environment, Sometimes, and most of the times, this has less of an implication. I'll explain that. But first, if we're talking about a single user, how do we get around this? Where we may have a database, where we're reading from a read replica that's eventually consistent, or we are creating a projection for a separate read model that we're reading from, or we're just doing asynchronous messaging. So there's three kind of aspects that I'm gonna talk about. The last actually is the most important. So the first is server wait, which is basically, and I'll go all over these, is just waiting at the server for replication or that read model to update, pulling at the client, waiting for it to update, pushing to the client when we know our read model has updated, and the most important is read from the primary where appropriate. So the server wait concept is basically that you're gonna wait before returning to the client after your write 
until replication has actually occurred. So what this means is we send our command, our command handler happens, we write to our primary, we make that state change, but then we wait. We don't return immediately uh, to our client. We're checking the read replica. And again, this is dependent on implementation of what database you're using. You can be using kind of the binary logs, some index to know where it's at. There's different ways of doing this, but ultimately you're waiting. And once you know that that replication has occurred, then you can then return that blocking call to the client so that when it makes its write to the read replica, it will be up to date based on when that write occurred. The obvious downside here is latency. You're adding latency to all your write requests. So you're gonna have to wait for that replication to occur. Now, if that replication is generally very fast, um, talking like single digit milliseconds, then that may not be an issue. Context is important here in terms of how you're replicating, how quickly it is. And again, are you write uh, heavy or you read heavy, if you don't have that many writes and you can add 10 milliseconds to that latency of that request, maybe that's okay. Again, it depends on your context. But the downside here is you're going to be add latent, you're going to be adding latency to your writes. So we can also do client polling, which is really just waiting in a different spot. Instead of waiting on the server, we're just going to be waiting on the client. So what this means is we have our request to make our state change to our primary. We return immediately, however. But what we return and what the client is aware of is what the version is of the thing that we are actually changing. So that way, when we perform our query, when we hit our read replica, we know whether we are at an old version, a stale version, or not. So say we are at a stale version, maybe we have some retry logic, some time out there. Again, depending on our replication lag, how long that is, we wait, then we subsequently, replication happens, we make our call, and then we get the, the data that we expect. So we're removing basically that latency on the command side, but then we're potentially adding it on the client side when we need to wait. Uh, and again, this has some more infrastructure because you need to have some type of version or date time to know when the read replica uh, actually did update. So another way we can deal with this is just pushing to the client as a notification to let them know that our projection is updated or an event has actually occurred. So what this looks like is we have our command side, we generate our event, we persist that to the event store, and then we just Im immediately return to the client. But our client is built in a way that it's expecting a notification, a push notification to it, see a VAO WebSockets or something, that that change has actually occurred. So from there, our event handler, it could be different event handlers for that same type of event. One of them maybe is updating our projection. And then the other one is subsequently pushing a, that event to our client to tell it, okay, this has actually occurred. Your state change has actually occurred. And then from there, our client, because it knows this now, can make a request to our read model, to our query database, and get the updated data. To illustrate this, I'm using the eShop on container sample application. And you see my last order number here is 21. So I'm gonna add a new order. I'm gonna go through the checkout process. And what you're about to see is that immediately, you won't see my new order. But then because it's using WebSockets, it's gonna push information, which then will add it to the grid. So I'm gonna place my order, there's 21, then order 22 showed up. But it didn't happen on that initial page load. It was using a WebSockets connection to push the event down to notify me to update the grid, to update the UI. So lastly, a way to get around this is just to simply read from the primary. Again, you're in the situation where this is just to a specific user meaning they're performing some write, so you need to perform a read that you want to be consistent. So that just means that when you perform your actual command and write to your primary, and then you immediately return, you don't care about replication lag because you're not actually gonna to go to the read replica or async processing or projection, whatever the case may be. Rather, in the context of when you know that user did something through code, through infrastructure, you basically tell it in a given window of time after you've performed this, when you need to perform this read, go to the primary, don't go to the read replica. Then again, depending on how you have this configured, it could just be a time window. If it's say a hundred milliseconds after that time's passed, then your logic will immediately not go to the primary, but then at that point will go to the read replica. So when you perform a write, you have some window of time afterwards that you're not gonna go to the read replica, but rather you're gonna go to the primary. Now, obviously the downside here is that you're performing more reads on your primary, but it solves the issue of having to do server weight, client weight, or pushes, um, and not having to deal with that extra latency.
Finally, again, I just want to emphasize context. And everything we're referring to, again, is reading your own right and why that's an issue. Because if you're not in that situation where you have one per user performing some state change, all the other users may not be affected and stale data isn't really necessarily an issue. For example, if we have some catalog management or product management where one particular user is changing the title or image of any of these products, well, that's that doesn't affect me as a viewer of this website. The next time I hit this page, if it's updated, great. Nothing here necessarily is time sensitive for me to get that read that read replica or whatever data that might be stale or eventually consistent. So again, context is important here. And most case scenarios, people are concerned about reading their own rights. And that's where they run into these issues. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.